Today on Rambling About Cars, boy, have we got some big Dodge news to talk about. All kinds of debuts in the Motor City. We have stuff coming up to Monterey Car Week. There's a new Porsche 911, GT3 RS, lots of debuts. And yes, finally, we're going to get through some reader responses, some comments, all kinds of good stuff, emails. So without further ado, it is podcast time. I am Christopher Smith and Mr. Chris Bruce is across the way. It's been a week, and it's only Wednesday for us. It has been a week. It's been a very busy week, and it's only <laughs> going to get busier. Real quick, as always, please like, subscribe. We love comments. We're going to be reading some comments in the second mm -hmm. half of the show. Um, so, yeah, please do all of that stuff. But uh, it's been a, quite a week between the Monterey Car Week stuff and then the Woodward Dream Cruises this weekend. And so Dodge has just been out there hot and heavy putting stuff out. And I think that's where we got to start with something that is hot and heavy, arguably. The, the, <laughs> well, something that I was just talking about or, or writing up um, literally about 20 minutes ago. Usually when we record the podcast on Wednesday nights, um, Bruce has a little bit of a gap between the normal working hours and then when we record. And I usually take about a half hour break or so. Not this time because Dodge... Like Bruce said, Woodward Dream Cruise is coming up. Dodge has had their speed week going on all week long. They've done debuts on Monday, on Tuesday. The last one is today. That's where we're going to start. And this is absolutely fresh in my mind. It is the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT concept. One thing that they don't mention in that title is that it's electric. This is the electric future that dodge is promoting and yes. to to just sum it up really quick if you're not able to see what we're doing on youtube always you can always check us out at motor one podcast on youtube if you can't go there this is a two-door dodge charger modeled after the 1968 to 1970 models but it's thoroughly modern mm -hmm. it's it's borrowing it's styling from was, from the yeah but there are some big 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 differences especially in front Right. Well, here's where it gets a little weird because, yes, this is an electric concept. Now, you want to know power. You want to know performance. Dodge isn't sharing any of that yet. Um, no. It's a little a little surprising, to be honest. They're just not sharing anything as as far as speed. They've got some interesting far... buzzwords, though. <laughs> oh, man, do they have buzzwords? Um, let's see. We have the. R wing, I believe it's called, if I'm remembering correctly. I ju I just wrote this. I just I just ran through this like an hour ago. There's the R wing, which is supposed to be like the big wing on the old Charger Daytona, but it's not on the back. It's on the front, and it's up there to provide enhanced aerodynamic performance because this is an EV. It's supposed to slip through the air a little bit better while offering good downforce. Um, right. So. Let me interrupt real quick and just explain to people. I'm going to pull mm -hmm. up this image here because it's hard to tell. It's honestly hard to tell even in photos. Actually, whoa, here, let me go back here. So the What's front the is is actually open. It is right. I, I don't know if you'd call it, it. It's not quite a flying buttress, but it it is an open piece. So that allows air to flow under it and kind of then up and over the car. So it's kind of got this. It has a, it literally has a wing at the nose, which right. we don't the, usually see. The big wing is up front. Um, and when you look at it straight head on, a straight head on view, it looks like a modern interpretation of that classic 68 to 70 Dodge Charger front. Mm -hmm. It's got the, it's just the really wide kind of stance with a big flat nose and a flat hood. But then once you get up to it, it's like, oh, the hood isn't flat at all. It has this big scallop cutout, and the yep. top portion of that grill is actually the wing. And, yeah, they call it the R-wing, again, for performance, uh, for downforce, and enhanced aerodynamic performance. Now, R-wing is one of the buzzwords. I'm going to jump. I'm not going to jump to the big one right away because we're going to have to spend a little bit of time talking about that. The second buzzword is the erupt transmission. Oh, okay. Like, I like, thought like we were doing Banshee next, but okay. Well, well okay. The, technically, I guess there's four that we'll have to get to. So, yeah, oh, okay. we have the, we have the, I added one. 
we'll have the erupt transmission erupt transmission that's basically a multi-speed transmission this ev has a transmission that changes gears or does it change well, gears? It's it's very Dodge is very very vague on this. They describe it as a multi speed transmission where you'll be able to feel noticeable gear shifts, and it will deliver um, an experience that's very on brand with Dodge. But they don't really offer any details as to what it means, other than the experience, and it's called erupt. Obviously, going for a little bit of a uh, of excitement there um, a word play there so just just I, a little i and i don't know I, I don't know this but this is what i'm sort of guessing is that i recently wrote up a story about the electric the lexus electric sport concept and it is they've suggested it might have a similar system where mm -hmm. it's essentially simulated shifts it is an electric vehicle it you know there there are no gears that it's going through but the system is simulating them so you still get that kind of jolt back as you go through the gears right um and i that, think I'm, that's what dodge is doing as well it could be i just want to point out that we don't know for sure no, um <laughs> the, the the press release just talked about erupts and offering the sensation of gear shifts um i mean there, there's no reason why you can't put a transmission in something like this, if you get right. it all hooked, well, hooked up right. As an example, uh, the Porsche Taycan, its rear axle has a two-speed uh, gearbox in it. Right, uh, right. And it's an EV, and so that is, you can have a, a transmission with gears in an mm -hmm. EV. It's just uncommon, generally. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> Dodge, they are definitely going for uncommon with their Charger <laughs> Daytona SRT. Um, we have the R wing. We talked about the erupt transmission. Let's touch on Banshee because when you look at the photos here of this, of this concept car, you'll, you'll notice, oh, okay. They have Hellcat badges, illuminated Hellcat badges on the fenders. Ah, ah, ah. Those aren't Hellcats. Those are Banshees. Um, because this vehicle uses a Banshee powertrain, a Banshee propulsion system. What does that mean? You ask? We it's electric. <laughs> it, it's electric. Um, again, Dodge has been very, very shy with details. They're simply calling it their Banshee propulsion system. Presumably, it's going to be their their highest output version of their electric powertrain that they're going to use on this car. And actually, um, Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskas mentioned something similar to that during their live stream debut that wasn't mentioned in the press release. Oh, there, we there, there. There, there will is be the Banshee right there. I'm going to pause that image for anyone. Oh, I got to go back one. Up, uh, up, so if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see the Banshee, which is yep. very, very similar to the Hellcat badge. But you can see it's clearly screaming like the famous Banshee. Right. And the way this is laid out, there there will be various tiers of um, power and performance that you'll be able to get, as you see with, with many electric cars. Um, of course. Um, you know, depending on the output that you want and Banshee will be the top tier. They won't, uh, they don't have any power figures yet for what that means nope. in their press release on this Dodge does say that it's faster than a Hellcat. Um, it is all wheel drive. So we know that much, um, the, the top, the top tier will be an 800 volt system. Um, but when it comes to things like range, um, zero to 60 top speeds yet yeah, well we don't have any of that information yet um right. so to review we have the r wing we have the erupt transmission we have the banshee propulsion system now and the craziest one of all everybody out there listening you need to do your jazz hands right now we we need to we need to know that the jazz hands are going because this <sighs> ev has a Fratzonic chambered exhaust system. What is that, Bruce? What is the Fratzonic chambered exhaust? Well, we what? don't how, know how do you for get sure, that? but we have it narrowed down according to our boss, boss Seth, of one of two things. It's either a fancy, fancy name for a speaker, or it might be a fancy name for a deer whistle. <laughs> <laughs> we're unclear well, but it's one of those 
Well, and and this is something that I actually contacted uh, Dodge about because uh, I would like a little more clarification, and I think the readers would too. Um, if you go by the traditional definition of exhaust, that in, in the mechanical sense is some form Waste of gas or air exiting the... ex exit exiting a component exiting Correct. some sort of machinery so so okay they're calling this a chambered exhaust they're saying this ev has an exhaust system is dodge being super clever i mean are they capturing some sort of emission or air spinning off of an electric motor converting or, or amplifying that into sound to use that as a basis for their exhaust note? Um, or is it just like just a purely synthesized sound with a big bass cannon? What I want to do here, uh, let me read, um, let me find the spot here in the article um, where Dodge describes what the system is here. Um, here, can you tell it, me what paragraph it is? Nope, I will throw I've, it up on YouTube. And okay, like, it is. It, it should be just above the photo gallery, Bruce. Just above the photo. It'll okay. be just okay. above I the gotcha. photo gallery there. Um, yep. And Dodge says its build has an industry first system that pushes performance sound. And now this is quote performance yes. sound through an amplifier and tuning chamber located at the rear of the vehicle. Unquote. So. That's a speaker. That's just it's, an amp. It's, That's like what that, you would hook up to I, your uh, electric yeah, I mean, guitar. Is that like a, I mean, is that like a bass cannon? Is is that like a bass? But here's here's the thing. Um, and I will put some sort of link or, or I'll try to embed a video um, in the article that goes up every Friday at motorone.com describing the podcast because we did get to hear this during the live stream debut of this concept car that just took place as we're recording about an hour ago. Um, Dodge does say that it is loud. It's 126 decibels, which apparently is equal to a Hellcat under throttle. Mm -hmm. um, and we did hear it. And um, how do I, how do I describe it for any eighties so, movies? I have not heard it. I did not get to see this video. Smith, you did. So th the first thing that I thought of, if anybody out there is familiar with the classic eighties car B movie, the Wraith with Charlie Sheen, that vehicle um, was actually a Chrysler concept car. It was um, in the movie. It, it was like the supernatural car and it had like, it had a very kind of weird spacey sound. It sort of reminded me of that. It, 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 okay. it's, it's a very synthesized kind of a V8 space age sound. Um, managing editor Brandon Turkus was at the event and, and he made a comment that uh, it sort of reminded him of the V8 in Gran Turismo 2. So, Ooh, that's so, so, so take, take that however you choose. Um, but there, there is sound available. We'll try to plug it into the article because it's, hey, to Dodge's credit, it's, I mean, it's a sound, sure. it's a sound that you can, that you can blip apparently at will. Um, and th there's okay, no other EV out there that, there's, the yeah, there's no other EV out there that has it. So no. th they're trying to, I mean, they're trying to stay true to their core, right? Um, noise, power. There's no question that this is going to be a fast vehicle. And, oh God, no. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be very fast. Um, it has sound. It has a lot of catchphrases to go with it. And there's still a lot that we don't know about. Um, but yeah, that's the car in a nutshell. When you look inside, um, I think the inside is actually pretty attractive. It's not that far off from a current production vehicle. Um, yeah. they, the, the big wide 1968 to 70 Dodge Charger grill is a theme of the design inside. So you'll get a little bit of that with some of the texture. They have some pretty neat ambient lighting in there. There's a big panoramic roof that lets light in. Um, and this is also a hatchback. You can fold down the rear seats, open up the rear hatch, and Dodge says it actually has quite a bit of storage space inside. Um, and on the outside, I think it looks fantastic. So Dodge Charger Daytona SRT concept. It's an electric vehicle. I know Dodge, I mean, for God, for over well over a decade now, 
Dodge has really kind of painted themselves into a corner of the Hemi V8 and then with the Hellcat. And it's like, it's, it's going to be tough for them to get out as we move forward to EVs. Um, and I know yeah. from, from watching um, the recent live stream debut um, and catching some of the, the YouTube comments, I mean, obviously people tend to be more negative than positive all the time. It's going to yes. be very tough for them to get out, but this is, I think, honestly, I think this is a decent effort. It's going to have performance. They're trying to do something different and unique with sound yeah. because because people, I mean, how many times have you heard people say, oh, I don't want my car to sound like a washing machine? Well, you know, it, it's a different That's sound. That's not what EVs sound like, though. And I, I, don't th- I don't think so. It's a different sound. It doesn't have to be worse. It c- certainly right. can be better. It's all in how you interpret it. It's like, are you more interested in sound or are you more interested in driving? So, um Dodge, they're, so they're, they're trying got, to answer a question here with us. I've got three things that I want to kind of bring up here. One of them's a joke, one of them's a personal feeling, and one of them is something that I discovered on our site that kind of fascinated me. Okay. So I'll start with my joke. Uh, for any fans of early 2000s music, you probably know about the band LCD Sound System. His big hit was Daft Punk. Daft Punk is playing at my house. And from everything I hear, it sounds like this is Daft Punk is playing in my car, uh, judging from what it sounds like. So there's my bad joke. Okay. Secondly, it, it, it's, it's all right. I don't Yeah, It wasn't a good joke, but it's what I thought of. Hey, they're not all winners. Um, secondly, I don't love this look i really like the nose and then it gets to the a pillar and i'm like meh like it it, it becomes less charger and more challenger in my mind it does it does like it's like there's a a, great yeah everything up to the a pillar i'm like yeah and then it gets to the roof and i'm like no and it, it that's just my personal opinion we don't know but what if i told you that we Got a really good preview of this car two years ago, and we didn't know about it. <gasps> really? Do you do you we have did. a surprise in store for us, Bruce? I do. Um, let me so, share this. So I'm I'm trying to rack my brain here. We got a preview of this two years ago. So a ch- a Charger s- Challenger mashup somewhere. Tell me, so uh, am I sharing this right now? Yes, I am. Yep. So Ralph Giel on his own Instagram page posted this image and he said, we are still having virtual design reviews while we self isolate and work from home. Keep in mind, this is 2020. This is the height of COVID. Mm-hmm. So yeah, while we are, while we are never to show future product and social media, I have made an exception this time as this experimental design of a Dodge of the future fell on the cutting room floor because the designer decided to make the yellow spoiler guards a permanent part of the theme. So look at, ignore the yellow bits at the bottom and, you know, these kind of fake uh, hood hold downs. Yeah, the, it's we that, that's a muscle of, car kind of a hood pin thing. There yeah. is some similarity there. Look at that. I mean, you have it's you got have the, the wide open hood. It's got the open it's hood. The, it's got the flat. It's got the flat face. We kind of got a preview of this two years ago and had no idea until right now that it debuted. And I just I was looking through our old stuff about future challengers and chargers and whatnot and found this and I'm like, wow, we. Ralph, you kind of teased us really good right there. You yeah, kind of like that's it's a, not that's exact clearly. Time. Like things have changed over time, but that nose is still the nose that we're looking at here. So that's a that's a really good find. Well done, Bruce. And I would like to have I would like to see what that car looks like from the back to see if there's okay. some of that Charger Challenger mashup. I think that's I think that's what's a little off putting there, and I don't mind it as much as you do. Um, but I, but I think when people yeah. first look at it, you get that. Okay. It's a charger front with more of a challenger back. Yep. Give it some time. And I think, and I think that will go. Yeah. And, and, and I should also point out, um, that this is a concept car. It's unclear at this point, whether we're looking exactly. at a near production concept, whether it's just a concept where bits and pieces will translate to production. Listening to Tim, uh, uh, Kaniskis at the, at the, the uh the live stream event this evening 
I kind of got a feeling that maybe this is more of a near production thing because he was going through various power modes and various uh, vehicle modes that the vehicle. But that, that that's going to have. But but again, we don't know. We don't know for sure if this is going to be a near production or or how it's going to play out. What we do know, what we do know is that something is going to have to play out soon. And this transitions into some additional Dodge news because um, on Monday we were given a taste of the current situation with Dodge with their vehicles. Um, just a, a, a preview of what's to come for the 2023 Charger Challenger. Um, some some new special edition models that uh, that we haven't been announced yet. Um, each car is going to have a special plaque under the hood saying "Last Call" because. Production of these cars ends in December 2023. So December of next year, the current generation Charger, Challenger, they're done. So what's going to replace them for 2024? Will it be this Charger Daytona SRT concept? More or less as we see it here, will it be something else? We still don't know just yet. And we should also talk about... I'm sorry. I have myself muted because I have a dog who is very, very, very <laughs> angry that someone is walking through our cul-de-sac that is not allowed by him. So I have muted my mic, and that is why I wasn't responding to that. You will still hear him in the background, but this will be our next topic. That is the Dodge Hornet, and I'm going to mute again and hope this horrible, horrible person gets out of my uh, No, no. T- tell the truth, Bruce. Tell the truth. Cooper is excited for the Dodge Hornet. He's sitting back there yelping. It's like, come on, we need to talk about the Dodge Hornet. You've run your mouth enough about this this electric charger. Let's talk about the Dodge Hornet. What is the Dodge Hornet? Is it an Alfa Romeo Tonale with a different front end? Some might say yes. Well, yes, if, it is. It literally is. It's made if the you, same factory. If, if you go to our debut post at MotorOne.com and jump into the comments, it's been a very active comment section, and it's sort of a mixed response there. Um, personally, I think it's pretty cool. Um, Dodge, they're really, I, I think, uh, managing editor, Brandon Turk has said it best cause he wrote this debut post. He said, um, Dodge, they kind of don't really get the compact crossover segment because they're not really talking about practicality. They're coming right out with performance, um, in its base mode, the 2023 Dodge Hornet GT, that's the entry level model, will start under $30,000 and it'll go zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Um, the base engine is the turbocharged two liter making 265 horsepower. Um, it drives the front wheels and that's going to be the entry level model. And I mean, when you think about something under 30 grand, it's not an unattractive vehicle. I, I mean, I, I think it looks pretty good. Most alphas look pretty good, right, Bruce? So um, this one looks obviously, okay. like, it, I mean, it, it has a Dodge front on it. Um, it does, yes. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of people that are hating on this are just used to Dodge everything being being V8 or Hellcat, and here we have a small compact crossover. Um, with a little four cylinder engine. Oh, that can't possibly it's be not fun. But I mean, it's little, but it's not weak. It's, oh, it's, it's not weak at all. 265 horsepower. And this is the entry level trim under 30,000. Right. They're also going to make this um, in RT trim. And that's where it gets electrified. That's the 2023 Dodge Hornet RT plug in hybrid. Now that's going to get the turbo 1.3 liter engine driving the front wheels. There is a 90 kilowatt electric motor at the back all combined. It's 285 horsepower total output and Dodge gives you a little button to push. They call it the power shot button. It'll give you an extra 25 horsepower and that'll take this zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. Now we don't know what the price is for the RT yet. Both bravo and shame on you to whoever is in Dodge's marketing department coming up with these like these terms, your your banshees, your power shot buttons, etc. Like I love it in a they're, way, but they're like, working, they're man. Corny as hell, man. They, they're working, and some of it, some of it is really corny. Um, I mean, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay pretty diplomatic here. Um, I I'm like, not hey, really. 
I'm not much of a fan of the uh, of the frat Zonic exhaust. Um, and, but that and, person, I'm assuming it's one person. It could be a whole team. I don't know, but they're earning their paycheck this month. They're, like they're they're. I give them credit. They are working extra hard to make Dodge's transition to electric something truly interesting. And yeah. whether you love it or hate it, there is absolutely no denying that it's interesting. Um, yeah, and we totally. see a little bit of that here with the Hornet. This is obviously a vehicle that, okay, you can't get it right now, but the you entry level soon, team very team soon. goes on sale um, at the end of this year. The RT goes yeah. on sale next year. We don't know the pricing on the RT yet, like I said. Yeah. Um, inside, okay, it, it's it's sort of the alpha still inside. You've got the 12.3-inch <laughs> digital instrument cluster. You've got the 10.3-inch center screen um one thing that dodge did do though with this and it kind of surprised everybody it made me very happy because i am a fan of the 1980s turbo dodge stuff and no we, that's uh, not true it, it's you you don't you hate might, those cars it might be a little true um and <laughs> when you talk about 80s turbo dodge usually the first vehicle that comes to mind is the dodge omni glh the uh the car famously known as going like hell goes like hell that's actually what glh stands for back when carol shelby GLH was still working S with stand for real quick goes like hell some more exactly on the on the shelby chargers yes you're not you're not gonna get that past me bruce not i know not i on, wasn't but not I, on I a car you're gonna know. that's the improv that's the beauty i it's it's back and forth it's like playing tennis so so to jump back to modern day um Dodge introduced a Hornet GT GLH concept. Um, it is a concept, but it's basically a showcase of what you can get through Dodge's direct connection for upgraded parts, ECU tunes, uh, suspension mods, lower the suspension a little bit, um, graphics, wheels, things of that nature. So in theory, you could build something like this with aftermarket part. Well, sorry, not aftermarket. This is coming through Dodge's direct connection. And aftermarket. Dodge says if it's installed by uh, one of their Dodge power broker dealerships, then the warranty vehicle warranty is still in effect. Um, and of course, the concept we're looking at it, it's it's lowered. Um, it has kind of the it's the black with like the silver and red um uh, striping on it it's got glh branding just like the old omni glh was back in the day and i'm kind of in love with it i think it's really cool and dodge again they sort of painted themselves into this v8 corner for years and years and it's going to be a little tough to break out of that but this i have how to you break out of that you appeal to nostalgia you, you, you know you appeal um, to nostalgia but not not just nostalgia but i mean this is a very specific type of dodge nostalgia the the turbo dodges have a very i, I won't say super small it's not a huge cult following but they are an extraordinarily devoted group of people. They are an extraordinarily devoted group of enthusiasts. This is a direct call out for them to get involved and to get excited about newer Dodge stuff. And hey, it's a small, uh, do you want to call it a hatchback? A, a small hot hatchback? I, I know it's a crossover, but they're going for that hot hatch vibe of the 80s. And I love totally. them for trying. I absolutely love them for trying. And I'm I'm not on board with any of the hate really for the Dodge Hornet. Take I, it, take it as it is. I think they're, they're giving it one hell of an effort to offer something under 30 grand. That's going to have some exciting performance and then give it a little bit of, of some extra, some extra support from the in-house uh, tuning company that mm -hmm. the Dodge will give you a, a little bit extra for. So well done on the Hornet. I think GLH, Whew, we have we have one other bit of major Wait, I, dodge I, news. I, I want to add one other thing to this. Okay, and that Go is ahead. that our colleague Brett Evans was talking about this, and his you know unlike us, he gets press cars and he drives you know a lot of compact crossovers, and the interesting thing to him about this vehicle was that it was putting an emphasis on performance. That that is. You know, maybe there are people out there that want a crossover, but also want some performance ability about it uh, with it. They, you know, they, 
Mm -hmm. They want the practicality and a little bit of speed. And this seems to be the vehicle that most immediately is, is going to fill that role, especially at this price point. You have things like the, um, the RAV4 Prime, which has, if I'm not mistaken, like 304, 305, something like that horsepower. But that's going to be significantly more expensive. Whereas for this, like you said, the uh, the base price is 30 ish grand and you're going to have a speedy little compact crossover. So, yeah, they say it, they say it's under 30 grand to start. There's been no official pricing announced. Right. Um, I will say this, and this is news that came out just in the last hour or so with the uh, with the Charger Daytona debut. Um, uh, Dodge CEO Tim Kaniska said. Um, they already had 14,000 pre-orders for mm -hmm. the Hornet in 24 hours. And we just put that article up on Motor One. So, I mean, obviously, it's it's garnering some interest. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it, but with the RT in the plug-in hybrid uh, mode or in just electric mode, mm -hmm. you get 35 miles of electric-only range, which, which is... I th which I think is a pretty darn good number as well. So, I mean, you're getting a good mix there. I, I, I give them credit. I feel like they're they're hitting all the bases. It's just... Dodge is going to have trouble pushing past the V8 crowd that they've catered to for so many years. So, um, hey, let's let's they have to do it eventually. Is the thing like they got to <laughs> pull off that band aid? Like it, you can't. The V8 can't exist forever without some sort of electrification, whatever. And this at least shows a way forward for them. And also the Charger SRT that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the Daytona that you can have an exciting electrified vehicle from Dodge that doesn't have a V8 under the hood mm -hmm. and can still be a lot of fun. So, well, it, you know, do you want a little taste of irony then Bruce? Yeah. Tell me <laughs> I'm wrong because I'll pull because, this up because, yeah. because, because on Monday, along with announcements of, you know, some of the new additions and, and, um, and features for the 2023 charger and challenger, Oh, we're going to bring back the 710 horsepower Hellcat powered Dodge Durango. Oh, originally just scheduled for a one year run in 2021. Um, Dodge says that there's been enough demand. There's been enough interest. They are bringing it back for one last hurrah for the 2023 model year. They don't tell Why us. Didn't they say that the last time. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was it was supposed to be one and done, twenty twenty one. Oh, I know. And then they and story. then they said, "Oh, well, we're gonna we're gonna expand production a little bit because the demand is there. Apparently, the demand is still there because it's back. And as far as we can tell, it's identical to what it was in twenty twenty one. It's the same power, seven hundred and ten horsepower. They're giving mm -hmm. it the same performance stats: zero to sixty in three and a half seconds, eleven point five second quarter mile, one hundred eighty mile an hour top speed." Three row big SUV. We don't know what it's going to cost. They haven't listed pricing for the return of the Hellcat Durango, but we know back in the day it started at eighty two grand. So I mean, it's not a. It's, it's not, not be less than that. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's probably not going to be less than that. Um, but with it with it back on on the market, it's now I believe unless I'm missing something the most powerful internal combustion SUV production SUV you can get. Um, you can go out and get a, I think a Tesla model S or a model X plaid. That's yeah. going to have uh, it's what, like a thousand, some combined horsepower. Um, but if you still want your internal combustion, your V eight, like I said, it's a little ironic considering, considering how Dodge wrapped up their speed week debuts with the Hornets and then the all electric um, charger, they're they're trying to step away from the V8, but hey, they're still going to give it one last hurrah with a Durango. Um, I mean, from a corporate perspective, if people are buying them, how how do you turn away from that? Like yeah. if there's a demand and you you can sell them as quickly as you can make them. How do you know, how do you wean yourself off of that in a certain way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not going to blame them for putting it out there if people want to buy it, if there's a market, like they say. And, I mean, they're not going to do it without having some pretty good research in their back pocket saying, okay, sure. we, we can we can make X amount of money if we do another run of this. Um, right. Well, they already made like, it for 2021. They it then extended production a little bit because yep. they had so much demand. And they probably just looked at the balance sheet and said, you know, this is a vehicle that's engineered. It mm -hmm. takes nothing to make more of them. Just, Why just not flip the switch. 
yeah. I mean, honestly, taking a close look at the press photos that were released for the 2023 Durango, I'm pretty sure it's the 2021 press photos, just maybe with, with a different color, with, with a slightly different color Photoshop yeah. in place. So, hey, yep. um, it's back. The big Hellcat Durango is going to have one last hurrah. Um, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the Dodge news. Certainly a lot of Dodge news this week. Sure. Do we want to do we want to move on to Porsche? Yeah, that's actually the next one I was. I was let's, just about to click on that. Let's move on to Porsche because, I mean, from one high horsepower vehicle to another, man, the 911 GT3 RS turbos, who needs them? Just keep <laughs> spinning that thing up, man. Let's give it a new cam profile. That's that's what you get here with a GT3 RS, aside from the obvious aero enhancements. Um, power is and a lot to, of aero enhancements. Okay, a lot, a lot of a lot. aero enhancements. Power is up to 518 horsepower. Um, that is actually due. They have a new camshaft in there with different profiles on the cam. So you're getting a little bit more horsepower. It's still the seven speed PDK, zero to 60 three seconds flat 184 mile an hour top speed it is 1.14 inches wider than a regular gt3 because this thing needs to go around corners and <gasps> boy does it go around corners bruce do you have right. some other information on this or do you want me to keep going i don't want to monopolize the microphone here no 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 i have a few things to mention so if you're watching okay. on youtube right now i just popped the pictures up if you're not i'm going to explain what's going on they added a uh, drag reduction system to this which if you're not familiar that's mostly a formula one thing but mm -hmm. kind of motorsports in general and that is essentially a button that you press and the arrow changes and so you get a low error or you get a low um drag mode that lets you kind of cut through the air faster increase top speed you know, you're going down that straight away, whatever. And that's what that's for. There's also active arrow in other bits of this car as well. Mm -hmm. It's, it's essentially, you know, this is the Porsche true, true track car that the GT3 exists. And that's kind of the hardcore 911. They have the night, the GT3 touring now, which is kind of the, the middle child where it doesn't have all of the arrow, but it still has a lot of the fun eventually mm -hmm. we'll probably get you know a gt2 and a gt2 rs which will be turbocharged and have more power but with that more power you kind of you sacrifice some stuff the gt3 rs is like the track porsche you you know if you are the track day guy if that's if that's your thing and you've got a quarter of a million dollars to spend because that's the msrp it's of this it, it's not a quarter of a million it's two hundred twenty three thousand eight hundred. that's <laughs> That's a little but, less no, than a quarter million. Come on. With Bruce. the destination fees like twelve grand or uh, uh twelve hundred dollars. So okay. it, it's it's close. It's 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 close. Obviously, it's close. And yeah, I mean the big news here are the arrow changes. Um yeah. there's it's a they, they get they they get rid of uh, I think they take the three radiator setup. Um, that you have in the GT3, and they take it down to one radiator, which gives more room for the active arrow up front. There's the flaps that open and close up front. There's a flap that opens and close, closes on the new rear wing, which, by the way, this is the first time a production Porsche has a rear wing that's taller than the roof. How's that for a little bit of, of pub trivia? Um, it is a very, very large wing. Of course, it has the vents in the hood. It has the fender vents. Uh, and how serious of how serious is Porsche about this being used at the track? You can get the club sport package, not right. in the U.S., unfortunately, but Porsche oh, will I let you. That. Okay. It's it's not offered in the U.S. I'm not sure why, um, but we can but, get the the Visac package. Which right. Is, yes. Yes. Okay. We can we can get that package. The club go sport ahead. package go, go is a package. zero. It's a zero dollar option. Porsche never gives away anything for free. This is the zero dollar option that adds a steel roll bar, a six point harness, and my favorite, a handheld fire extinguisher. But it's a zero dollar option that puts in a roll bar. I mean, yeah, Porsche. They, I think they want people to take this to the track. They want to see people I mean, out, that's the point. out that's enjoying the, point the hell the out of it. And of course, but then the, also the, the Vice Edge uh, pack. I yeah, mean, there's more carbon fiber, um, optional magnesium wheels that you can upgrade to. So, I mean, yeah, it's it, it's it's still a 911. There are all kinds of little options that you'll be able to get on this car. 
And it's just wild. That is what's wild to me about this car is that, okay, this is the ultimate 911 track car. Uh, we've got some options if you want to make it the more ultimate 911 track. Oh, you want magnesium wheels? Okay, you'll have to order this package. Oh, this doesn't have enough carbon fiber on it? Okay, we can add a little bit more carbon fiber. We can fi add like, a little bit just, more. It, it, it's just funny to me that like this is... They announced the ultimate 911 track car, and then there are immediately options to like you everything. Know, you want to have even more? Yeah, we're ready. We're ready for you. Is you, you get your checkbook out, warm up that credit card. Let's go. And can we talk for just a moment about the red wheels on a white car? That oh, that's that, hot as hell. That should be ridiculous, but it is so not. Not on this no. car. It it is it is spot on. If you're listening on Spotify or one of the many audio platforms that we're on, try to take a moment and go over to Motor One Podcast on YouTube so you can see what we're talking about, or go over to MotorOne.com to our main website. All you have to do is type in Porsche 911. This is going to be one of the top options if it's not mm -hmm. still headlining the Motor One website when the podcast goes live. Because it's the, dark the, red. It's not quite a burgundy. It's yeah. It's I like mean, it's, it's not like it's not like Kool Aid red, right? It's not no, like no, no, Kool Aid no. red. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a crimson red, and it just looks good. You almost get a bronze. Yeah, impression there's a if little you, metallic if you, there if you glance yeah. at it but it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. it's a deeper red set on the white car with the big red 911 gt3 rs graphics on the side i will take it all yep you totally send your check for two hundred twenty three thousand eight hundred dollars to christopher smith via i really want this car yeah and you it's Smith isn't even getting the Vicehawk package, so he's saving you money. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm going to skip on that. Um, I would like to find a way to get the Club Sport package, though, because, man, Porsche never gives anything away for free. Anyways. Okay. Do, um, we've got to get to some comments, but do we have time for one more? We totally have. Yeah, because we're at 42 one more. minutes right now. So let's do, we'll get to about 45 and then spend the rest of comments. Real right. quick, I want to hit. So this is a story that I actually wrote up, just put up today. Mm -hmm. um, Cadillac put out the first image uh, images of the production spec Celestic. Am I saying that? It's Celestic. So, it's not Celestic. Celestic. Oh. Celestic. Celest okay. I put Celestic. my emphasis on the wrong. No, when you, when you see it, when I first saw it, it's like, okay, it's spelled C-E-L-E-S-T-I-Q. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's Celestic Q. Or so, so no, <laughs> so my first no, don't don't think about it too hard. It's celestic, celestic, but it's celestic. You put right emphasis is if you put an e on the there, it becomes celestic. Okay, yeah. who cares okay. about the name? Let's talk about the car because I still I'm I'm in love with this thing. Yeah, so uh, I wrote up the story. The celestic. We are now seeing the first images of the production model it is covered in this camouflage pattern if you're watching on youtube right now the camouflage pattern it's this mix of like odd silver elements and then beneath that there's almost like a night sky like it almost mm -hmm. looks like the stars so it 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 hides a lot and it hides a lot of the details but when you really look at the images it does seem like they kind of soften some bits from the concept it doesn't it's it's lost a little bit of the um, the sculpting. It's kind of it's simpler. It's it's more minimalistic. Although, like I pointed out in the story, I don't know if that's just the camouflage hiding stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it it that that's entirely possible, and we just don't know yet. But um, yeah, so they have a production version ready of this vehicle. It's on the road. It's testing around the GM Technical Center. And if you look at the images we have, you can kind of see the GM Technical Center if you're familiar with that, kind of the big dome building and stuff like that in the background. And Cadillac um, sent us these images, too. I mean, technically, yep. you might call them spy photos because, ooh, little look, there's a camouflage kind of road. But no, um, um, well, Cadillac sent us these these images and said, hey, we're testing the car out in public. We want to share it with your readers. Um, thanks, Cadillac, for shooting it over our way. Totally. We do know, I mean, we do know when Cadillac debuted the Celestic concept, I mean, they did say it was a near production version of the car. Obviously, seeing the car, the production version on the road in camouflage, there will be some minor differences. I think, Bruce, you, you hit it pretty well on the head. Some of the uh, some of the more more fantastic maybe um, features of the design toned down a little bit for production. Little, it's it's like 
it's like turning things down 10%. It's not, yeah. you can clearly see the concept still in there. It's just some of the lines are just a bit softer. Some of the creases are a bit softer. And like I pointed out in the story though, the interior, we're expecting a lot of that tech to carry over. So mm -hmm. it has a 55 inch diagonal array of screens. It's not yep. one screen because I don't really know that anyone can, has done that in a car yet, but it's a bunch of screens. So the driver has stuff to look at. There's stuff on the center console. There's stuff for the passenger to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there's stuff for the rear passengers as well, which isn't part of that 55 inches. And there's also a glass panoramic roof with, and each passenger can um, uh, tint out their section of that. So, you know, obviously, generally, you might not be driving with four people in the car. But if you are and person in the back right doesn't want all that sun on them, they can darken that out and they can, you know, be in the dark or mm -hmm. vice versa. They want that natural light. They can brighten it up and they can have that natural light or at any configuration of that. And there's certainly space for them in the back. It's in production version, still long, swoopy, oh, yeah. fast back. Yeah. I mean, I, I am I am crying to see one of these in person. Um, I, I grew up in my family with a 1960 Cadillac Series 62 convertible. This is a two-door convertible that I think was like 20 feet or maybe 21 feet long. And... Mm -hmm. I mean, this obviously is nothing like that. It isn't a convertible. It's got four doors, but I just kind of get that larger than life vibe from this car. The wheelbase is just tremendous. Yep. It it looks, it looks very swoopy. I, I would love it if Cadillac put some fins on the back, but I know I'm, I'm in the minority on that. I'm in the it, minority on that. So uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to scroll down here and show the taillights of the concept because we can kind of see them on the production version. They, they kind of evoke uh, they, they do. fins though. Like they it's do. Like they kind of took the idea of fins and how do we do that in the modern era? We do it with LEDs and we do it with red LEDs mm -hmm. and that's what they did. So it, it's... Yeah, it's a good looking car. I really like the look of this car. I'm afraid at the rumors that it might cost three hundred thousand dollars because that's just i mean we we know it's supposed to be we don't have any information on pricing but we know well, it's, there's the three hundred thousand dollar rumor that came out but we the, have no there's there's the rumor but, but we know it's it this is going to be a halo car for cadillac yes um it's it's not going to be something that's that's going to be like sitting 10 or 15 deep in every dealership you know, like, like an XT4 or something. This is going to be a very, very special Halo vehicle for Cadillac. Um, and I can't wait to see one in person. Totally. Same here. Well, what do you think, folks? Do you want to see one of these in person? Email us, podcast at motor1.com. You knew I had to get to this pitch eventually, everybody. Email us, podcast at motor1.com. You can always comment on our articles at YouTube Motor One Podcasts. You can always comment on our article that goes up every, 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 every Friday at motor1.com, giving you a summary of everything we talk about here, but without the cool flair that only Bruce and I can bring to your podcasting um, daily pleasures. Now, speaking of comments, and hearing back from listeners, I think it's time. We have a couple weeks to catch up on here, man. What do you we think? Do. We we totally do. Real quick, I want to throw one last thing out there. Yep. So next week, the game plan is to have either one or both members of the Motor One team who attended Monterey Car Week to be on the show. So we will be doing... I know we did it last week. We will be kind of doing a Monterey rack, a wrap up. So there's some but, stuff that we know is debuting. Yes. We know that there are auctions happening, stuff like that. But we also like there's there's stuff coming that we didn't get a chance to talk about last week. There's stuff coming that we didn't week. know about last week yeah. um, that we kind of know about now, but we still can't yeah. talk about. So You'll definitely want to tune in next week because there are, I think there are going to be some pretty big surprises, some pretty big announcements yes. that you're going to want to yes. hear about. So if you're like, well, they talked about Monterey a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this, yeah, this is going to be, like, this is going to be a different episode. Plus yeah. uh, we're going to have new vehicles to talk about. Plus we're going to have yes. hopefully some on-site perspective of what it's like to be 
in one of the most glamorous automotive events in the world. Right. And I, so I don't know if I can, I am going to be as vague as I can so that I don't get in trouble, but I know our guys going to Monterey are going to get to drive a several decades old, very, very cool German car. Um, so that's as vague as I can be without saying anything. Cause I'm not sure. That's pretty so, vague. Yeah, that's pretty vague. That's pretty um, vague. That's vague. So yeah, um, we'll have them on next week. We're going to go through everything. We'll give you kind of a boots on the ground kind of thing. But without further ado, as Smith said, we have been very lax in reading your comments, honestly. Like, we love getting your comments and we love our listeners. And without our listeners, we wouldn't be here. Like, mm. if you didn't listen to the show, There'd be no reason to have done this for well, 85 episodes. You and I would probably be talking. We just wouldn't hit the record button. There's that. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, let's let's be honest. We wouldn't hit the record button, but sure. we have emails to go. We have some great emails to go over. We have lots of YouTube comments to go over. Bruce, where would you like to start? Start us off, man. So I have an email from last. Uh, I believe it's from last week. If it's not from last week, it's from like four or five days ago. And this is from Leland. From Lee, and the so, road trips. Yes. Yep. And so I'm going to read this. Dear Ramblers, it's been a while uh, and a few episodes of rambling have passed. So I thought I'd drop you a line about the Roadmaster wagon and road tripping. And that was from uh, um, episode 80 or earlier. That's what he, that's literally his next line. Back on episode 80, you all shared a note amidst a fabulous 80s and 90s car episode with Brad Hansen. Great guest. Great episode. I took your advice and started uh, doing a few small but longer than grocery getter trips with my Roadmaster. I discovered that the front of the block was wetter than it should have been. So instead of our road trip at the end of July, I got some intake manifold. I got an intake manifold uh, gasket work. Uh, for the well season, an untrained mechanic like myself, the standard six hour job became three days and only a couple of ancient plastic clips holding the TBI cables were broken in the process. I think. It's better now. And he puts question that in mark. question mark. <laughs> I'm so with you. Does I, I'll, I'll interject really quick. Working on Go the Sable Show wagon that I had that had the engine swap. Trying to do a simple coolant repair. I ended up slightly over torquing a bolt and had to tear down half the engine because it actually cracked the thermostat housing. So literally, literally like a one hour job. I think it was about two and a half weeks before I finally got the part and got around to put it on. So. Right. You did all right, man. You did all right. So uh, next graph. Uh, in the end, the timing was probably for the best. When I took it on a road trip in July, I passed through 105 Fahrenheit temps in, in Arkansas and then a flash flood warning and downpour near St. Mm. Louis on the way north from Louisiana. Uh, not something you really want to do in an old B body if you don't have to. Um, I'll work on a few closer home trips with it in the fall and I'll let it eat miles, which it does like nothing else. Uh, a couple nice. other items of feedback. Uh, so this is from Leland. Mm -hmm. You posted the question about blackout packages on black cars. Uh, I think we were talking about that. Was it, it was last week, right? I, Regarding I the was, singer. I, I, I think it was last week. Or with the Lucid, with its blackout pack. Anyway, yeah. yeah. I'm not really a fan, but it does make some cars like the Escalade seem lighter and more buttoned down uh, than when a lot of chrome is on it. Uh, what about dark gray or a similar dark blue on a dark car instead? Yeah, that's a... I Yeah, I'm well, on and, board. And I mean, there are some automakers. I remember Ford was big on doing this back in the day. They would do like a smoke package where yeah, it wasn't black trim, that. but it was just like a, it, it was like a different type of chrome that didn't have quite the same sh uh, uh, shine to it. So, yep. I mean, things like that have cropped up over the years for sure. Um, and then Jason Marker. Uh, was on episode 82. He was out outstanding, a mm -hmm. great ramble. I re uh, related to his end of trip spiral too. <laughs> I've been there after coming back at, from a fun trip on the road. It's always good to be home, uh, but the, the transition can be tough. Finally, the Roadmaster is not my first V-Body. I started with an Impala SS that I had in 96 for many years. I think that I think about that every time I hear a show reference on the show. I always wanted a show of my own too. The 80s and 90s had some fat, fantastic cars. So Leland, I that's that's a 
fantastic comment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no yeah, notes. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that's straight through. Thanks much for sending that that in. I'm glad you read that, Bruce. If you weren't going to read that one, I was going to read that one. Um, I'll I'll take over here for another email. This one actually cool. came back um, back uh, more in the beginning of August, August eighth here, according to the to the date. And okay, this that's is, only about a week ago. This okay. this is this is from Eric. Um, and Eric says, Hey guys, I really enjoyed rambling about cars. Number 80, uh, the episode we were just talking about, mm -hmm. despite not being born where any of the cars discussed were being introduced, save for the CRV and, uh, and Brad Hansen's police interceptor. There is a similar movement to Radwood in my country over here. It's called young timer camp. Oh, I the wonder if he's in Germany, because that's what they've always been called in Germany, uh, the young timers versus old timers. I, I, I suspect that's the case. And when we get to a, a list of vehicles down here, that's that's going to reinforce it here. Um, but it's called the young timer camp. This focuses on cars that are older than 25 years with a large portion of the participants being from the 80s and the 90s. Like last time, I took the opportunity to look at some used cars for your cheap car challenge. So here are my submissions. Yes, we have somebody that sent in some submissions for one of our cheap card challenges. We want to see more of this. So thank you very much, Eric, for sending these in. I know there are too many, just like last time, but they're great, and I can't choose. So here oh, are one I would choose immediately. I'm looking right at it. So so here are the cars um, that uh, that Eric sent in for this uh, cheap card challenge. And if I remember correctly, this was something from the 80s or 90s under ten thousand dollars. I believe that was our if, if, if I'm thinking of. So here's yep. what we got an Audi S4 2.7. Um, I'm thinking that's probably uh, is that is that going to be the B4? The, the, the B4 Audi, I think, with, with a 2.7 or, or maybe it's the, the B5. And see, um, probably the fast... I think that's a B5, actually. I think OK, OK. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that, that would be a B5. Uh, probably the fastest car that matches all the criteria. I do love that car. Doing any sort of engine work on that thing scares the bejesus out of me. Same. Um, uh, Citroen XM Brake CT 2.0 Turbo. That's a cool car. That's a pretty cool car. Who doesn't love a French quirk barge? <laughs> I love that description. <laughs> a French quirk barge. I'm, I'm totally going to steal that. You're going to see that in an article one of these days. I yep, promise. Same. Um, Mercedes-Benz CE 800 3.0 liter. 300. CE 300. What, what did I say? You said 800, or at least that's what I heard. Oh, I said 800? Maybe that's it's weird. wishful Any, thinking. Yeah, Mercedes-Benz CE 300, 3.0 liter. Uh, will last forever and will be cool, fast for the entirety of it. You're not wrong there. Opel Senator 3.0, 24 valve. A luxury car from Opel from a time when it arguably had a higher market position than Audi. Okay. Here's here's here's, here's yours, Bruce. Saab 9.3 Vigan 2.3 liter. Yeah, man. Yes, it's tuned. This particular one um, that he linked to, it's tuned. But who cares? It's a vegan. I remember when those first came out, um, and I thought they were pretty cool. And I still think they're pretty cool. And this, this one, one, oh man, I'm looking at it now. It is the <laughs> rare five door, not three door. So it's got the, five doors. The 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 vegan mileage is high at two hundred and eight thousand kilometers. So what? That's like. A little over 100, well, 130,000 miles. That's yeah, that's that's nice. That's not too bad. Asking too price bad. is 8,000 euros, which I believe right now is wow. just a, that's probably like 8,500 bucks. The these are these are low right now. The, these are some great choices, man. How about this Subaru Justy 1.8 liter? All wheel drive hot hatch choice. for less than 5,000 euros. Like that could be a lot of fun, though. That could be a lot of fun. And then the last car on the list, I th is there anybody that doesn't really like the Volkswagen Corrado VR6? No. no he's got a he's should. got a Volkswagen Corrado VR6. Um, just great design, great car, great engine. Um, Smith, I want you to check out the Justy here that he mentioned. I love the fact that it's got the hood pins on it. Like it's got the little, <laughs> uh, it's got the little lights, like. It's probably not a great car, but for what four thousand euros is the asking price. That That's, seems like a really cool car for four thousand euros. I I think so. I think yeah. so. I mean, is it gonna is it gonna rip up the road? No, but does it look like it kind of wants to? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So Eric, thanks so much for sending that in. You know, when we do cheap car challenges, we always say, hey, if you want to send us your picks, we'll try to read them. 
Here we go. We're going to read them. We're probably going to gonna fawn over most of them. Unless you send in a Pontiac Grand Dam. Nobody, come on, don't. A, a Pontiac Grand Dam is never a good choice for a cheap car challenge. It's never a good choice for any any vehicles. That's my public service announcement for you. Stay away from the Pontiac Grand Dam. Um, Bruce, we've got some YouTube comments. What do you think? We do. I'm looking for... Uh, I, I, so I've got them listed here. I'm looking for one that I really, really, really like. Um, I'm going to read this one from Gino Nix, who's a frequent commenter from ours. Mm -hmm. This is from seven days ago. Uh, this was when Clint was on the pod and I like this one. I agree with Clint. I live in LA and one of my cars is a Toyota FJ cruiser with a manual gearbox. I only drive it when I know the traffic is going to be moderate. <laughs> so I don't drive it very much. <laughs> LOL. This, this is in reference um, to our episode there. Clint was talking Unfortunately, about having to drive, I forget what it was. With the, with it was the Boxster. It was Brett's. Oh, of, oh, of that, the that's Boxster. right. It was, it was the Porsche Boxster. The, yeah, the Boxster. Twenty-five years, but I just like the comedy. He's like, yeah, I've got a manual in L.A. I only drive it when traffic is moderate, and I just love. And that's not very often. <laughs> now, I've done the Woodward Dream Cruise once, um, and I had a a O3 Cobra with a manual six speed and a rather heavy clutch. So I can, I can sympathize a little bit. Um, I was okay for one evening because it was an awesome car event. If right. you don't know the Woodward dream cruise, when everything is like peaked maxed out, you might go one block in like an hour. I mean, you're just sitting there just barely creeping along surrounded by all of these amazing vehicles. Um, you definitely get a workout with the old ankle, um, going through LA traffic, you know, Hey, we gave Clint a little bit of a hard time, but we did, I, yeah, I can, I can, totally I can, I gave him a hard time, but I, that's I can, because I can we love Clint. I can appreciate it. Well, let me read another comment from Gino. This is, um, Go for it. uh, just, just from last week's episode, because we did try something a little bit different and I think we're going to modify it here for the future. If you caught last week's episode, um, at the end of the episode, we configured a new Nissan Z right there during the podcast uh we brought up their configurator bruce and i decided what options we wanted we built our nissan z i think it was what like 42 grand and and some change yeah, um it wasn't that many options it was just kind of right. some like nice like features that you would want to live with but it, mm -hmm. it wasn't crazy right but uh gino says also the configuration segment was great especially on a car like the z which is in with his, which is within reach of most of us. And just curious, did you switch positions? I seem to remember Bruce always being on the left of the screen and Chris on the right. I don't know. Do, do we, we don't even have control of that. No, I, I responded to this. Yeah. So the, the program or the site that we use to do this, sometimes it switches it or it switches us around. Usually I'm on the left, you're on the right. Last week it was switched. It wasn't like anything conscious. It was just the site decided that's the way things should be. But thanks, Gino, for the feedback. Um, it, as we were going through it and listening to it, I, I mean, we enjoy doing it at the time, listening to it, even though we did it. It was like, oh, this feels like it's kind of dragging a little bit. We're going to do more configuration stuff in the future. But, yep. uh, I, but I think we're going to find a way to speed it up a little bit more because that's just fun stuff to do when you can spend money without actually spending, spending money. money. So right? we actually, and I apologize to have who, 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 I apologize to whomever commented about this. It was on YouTube, and I, I apologize again. I did not copy your comment down. Someone said that um, they want us to do that for the GR Corolla as soon as the GR Corolla configurator comes out. That's a fantastic idea, and I will tell you right now, we will do that. As soon as I can configure a GR Corolla in the United States, I will do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me jump in with a, another quick comment here. The Harf of Jar. Uh, oh, this is the one I think I was going to read. Let's re regular let's commenter. Just to address it, because this comes up from time to time. Y'all need to get Adrian onto the podcast. I've been exactly a reader since the German read. car fan days. Would be great to have him on a show. For those who don't know, Adrian, is he's based in Europe, and he's been with Motor One before Motor One existed, back in Literally. The, old, the, the old world car fan days. Um, I think he just passed his 10th anniversary um, with yep. world car fans and Motor One, and we call him Batman around, uh, around the Motor One crew because... 
like somebody finds a car, like, Hey, somebody just posted something about this. And he's like, Oh yeah, we are. We already covered that. It's like, he finds this stuff just like out of thin air. And I think he has listening devices either in our houses or, or, or he has somehow connected through Microsoft teams because all you have to do is just like make a, a very, very slight mention of AP or Batman. And all of a sudden he's like in the chat. It's like, Hey, what are you guys talking about? So I, I love him. We would love to get him on the podcast. We, we, it's something we have talked about. Um, totally. The, the, the yeah. time, the time difference is extreme. I mean, he is in Europe. Um, and right. I don't know. I let's just leave it at Europe because I don't yep. know that Adrian wants us to identify his location. We will say Adrian lives in Europe, and and, and we there is live a, in the United States, and, and so there is there a is big a big big time yeah. difference. But if there is ever an opportunity to make that right. work, I would love to chat with him. He has such a knowledge yeah. of vehicles and totally. such yeah. a personality. And, yeah, we and would like love Harf to have of him Jar mentions. Show. He has been with this site since the world car, world car fans german car fans day very like, early yep he has the institutional memory that we all wish that we would have at our job so so yeah, thanks I, much for the comment and also thanks for highlighting adrian because totally i yeah. think he slips under the radar a lot and he's i mean he's arguably the glue that keeps just the news team cranking out like we do oh, totally um, All right, Bruce. Sorry, I, I stole your comment there. What else do you got? You did. Now I got to look through a second. Well, while you look through a second, I can I can read another one here. This is also from um, uh, what podcast was this? This was when we talked about the best new cars in 2022 so far. Or no, I'm sorry. This is a comment on that podcast. Um, it's from Ted Adam Green says, thanks for another great ramble. We are in a new golden age of cars here in 2022. And the only villain is <gasps> supply. You're not wrong. Yes, he's not wrong. You're not wrong. We have the best gas powered cars ever, as well as the first legitimate EVs that fit the use case of cost and ability to logistically use and charge for a lot of buyers. I say 25% now, 50% by 2025. Spot on. I mean, we we don't even hardly blink now when somebody says a 600 horsepower no. combustion powered car. And we don't even really blink that much when somebody talks about a 600 horsepower electric car. Um, so it's very good points there. Yep. When you have a company like Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, killing it with value, performance and technology, they're like peak Honda was in the 90s. I, that, that's a that's a good comparison, too. Mm -hmm. And then you have Toyota doing actual somewhat affordable sports cars in three flavors of GRs. Okay. One of them's a BMW, but we'll, we'll give that. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you that. Sure. Yeah. We'll give you that. Ford is electrifying their iconic vehicles and brought the they Bronco are. back and made the Maverick as well. Maverick in the segment. American muscle has never been better. Want a mid-engine Corvette? Check. Want a Hellcat? Pick your flavor. And now you can get it in the Durango again. Want a Mustang? What's your poison? Turbo 4 V8? Even better V8? Supercharged V8? Did we mention an electric Mustang that's as fast as the 05 Ford GT? Yeah. Not sure what's next, but don't care. Today is awesome. And oh yeah, the Z is back too. Wahoo! Thanks, guys. No. Thank you, Ted, for sending in that awesome comment on YouTube. That makes me just smile. That's, that's the reason we do rambling about cars right there. Totally. So I have actually two comments I want to read. And then mm -hmm. one, depending on if you have one you want to finish with, I have one I want to finish with. But the two I want to read are from the episode when we had Jason Marker on. And that was mm -hmm. our first kind of, that's the first time we've talked about motorcycles on rambling about cars. So it was a, something a bit different. Yeah. So, and in doing something a bit different, we got new commenters, people yes. who have never commented before on the show. So Richard Stevens or Steffens, I don't know how you prefer to pronounce that last name. Uh, my wife and I have a 2021 uh, gear up, uh, the, the which is very, very similar to the bike that Jason has and have been riding uh, forest roads and country roads. We live about 450 miles from Raceway Ural, and which is the maker of that bike, and highly recommend them. Uh, Ural is a different beast for sure and a blast. Just don't expect uh, to get there very <laughs> fast. I like that little 
little bit of poetry there. Yep. Um, we live 55 miles away from uh, the Grand Coulee Dam. Uh, truly beautiful and a lot of dirt roads to explore. So very cool there. And then Scott Evans said, uh, I have a 2019 gear up. Uh, like the bike, I'm going to trade it in for a 2023. Um, they have made a lot of improvements since my 2019. I did two, two road trips that were over 800 miles, ran great, averaged 42 miles to the gallon. So uh, for our motorcycle show, like, yeah, I love having Jason on it. You know, it's maybe it's like a once a year thing or something like that for us. Like our clearly our listeners don't love motorcycles. That's not necessarily their thing. But Jason is just such a cool guy, and he's fun to talk to. So I really hope to have him on again in the future. Jason, I mean, aside from being just an authority on motorcycles, he he has a little thing that he calls Small Bike Rescue, where he does. I, I mean, he has several several projects in the works, um, but he's just also a fantastic. A creative writer, a storyteller, and he yep. brings all of that to bear in the things um, that not just he writes at rideapart.com. And by the way, rideapart.com, go check out rideapart.com. Even if you're not huge into motorcycles, hell, I have an article at rideapart.com. Do you? I didn't I know do, that. I, I do have an article at rideapart.com. If you can go to rideapart.com and find the article that I wrote, I will do something special on a future podcast episode. But, I don't even know what it but, is. But you so, got to yeah. go to write apart. Listeners, find it out. You've got you've to find it and post it in the comments. Email it to us. Put it up on motor1.com in our article that goes up Friday. Put it in Motor One Podcast. Go find the article that I wrote. I'll do something. I'll do something special. I'll do something a little crazy for you. Um, but yeah. Just a just a great person to to just sit down and have a talk with. Oh, totally. And, and so, it, cer- it certainly helps that he's just a big petrol head too. Yeah. Do you have one more comment that you really really like, or can I finish out with? One go ahead, that- go ahead, Bruce, and take us home here, man. Okay. So th- I will tell you who the commentary is at the very end of this. Um, I hope all is well. I'm not a fan of new cars but I really enjoyed the latest podcast. Now I know everything I need to know about the cool new cars and I can go back to the old stuff. And this is in reference to our episode a couple of weeks ago where we had Clint or yeah, we had Clint and we had Jeff and we had uh, Seth and we just, Mm -hmm. it was just all kinds of the, the best cars of the year talk. And that came from our buddy, Myron Vernus. And the reason I'm mentioning that is, is that the pre-orders are now open for Myron's book. It is called A Quiet Greatness. And we have been in touch with Myron and he and his co-author will be back on the show. We don't have it scheduled yet. We don't know whether it's going to be soon or whether it's going to be when the book actually comes out, which is in October. But we are in contact. He is going to be making a return and... We super look forward to it. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. I'm super excited to to have him back on the show to talk about the book. Um, Perhaps the most eclectic car collection ever. Yeah, I just love the fact that he went from collecting German cars. He had the first Porsche 911 convertible that was sold to the public. He got rid of that, and then he got into Japanese cars, and he has all sorts of Japanese cars, and now he's getting into all these, like, obscure Korean cars. Like, it's just like his his interest in cars keeps evolving, and that's so fascinating because that's the way I want to be. I don't want to just, like, pigeonhole myself into one niche and be like, oh, I only like whatever Mm -hmm. but no like as the years go on and the stuff changes he's like oh i like this oh and this is cool too and then you know it it, it's just really interesting to me that's what being into cars is all about yeah and what about you rambler what about you dear listener what are you into i'm going to do the pitch one more time because we love getting this stuff podcast at motor one.com our email send us email send us photos send us friendly photos don't send us weird photos send us photos of your cars we've Tell never us- gotten photos if you want to send me a weird photo i've no, never no, gotten a photo no, you send no, me a weird photo do not put that out there bruce you will regret it okay you, you will regret it email us comment on our youtube videos at motor one podcast tell your friends to go to a motor one podcast and subscribe to the channel the more subscriptions that, yes. we get 
the better we look in YouTube's eyes, the more we can spread the message of peace, joy, and loving all brands of cars, <clears throat> except the Grand Am. And you can always comment on our article that goes up every Friday at Motor One. Of course, you can always go to MotorOne.com for all of your regular automotive news. We're covering this stuff every day. Every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Motor One social media channels, you can get the Motor One Happy Hour, where Editor-in-Chief Seth Mirzma is talking with Motor One editors in just a very friendly, casual atmosphere about the brand new cars they're driving. So totally. all kinds of things you can check out. We love having you along. I think this podcast is just about there, Bruce. Yeah, I think it is. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to reiterate what you said. We love comments. We love likes. We love subscribes, all that stuff. But um, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Um, the only thing I can add is that, yeah, look forward to next week. We are really planning on doing kind of a Pebble Beach, Monterey Car Week, kind of just total wrap up. There's some stuff we have. We There's some stuff that we know that is going to happen that we can't discuss with you yet. So that's a nice little teaser. There's, mm -hmm. I'm sure, stuff that's going to be there that we don't know about yet. There's going to be auctions there that we don't know how they've sold yet. It, it's going to be a big deal, and we are going to try to get one or both of the people from the Motor One team that are going there to be on the show. So you'll get that firsthand kind of boots on the ground experience. Not everyone can go to that show. It's really expensive. It's California's it's, expensive to state to live in. Going to the Quail, going to Pebble Beach, going to the Laguna Seca, uh, what's it, the mo Motorsport Reunion. That's the like it it's, it's hard to do it's, as a normal car fan. So and it's even it's even a little difficult for journalists and for yeah. people higher level in, in the yeah. automotive world to get in. So yeah, it's gonna be a very yeah. special perspective. You definitely want to tune in for that. Totally. So uh we love you all. I hope you enjoyed this episode and come back next week for like I said, boots on the ground for Monterey. That's the plan, that's what we're hoping to do. Um, so yeah, um, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, and bye-bye, and thank you for listening. So that's, that'll do it. Bye-bye.